everyone. Welcome to Out of My Mind by Jennifer Lyles, MSW, LCSW. So I go by Jenny. Thank you to Jean Rosner, who came up with the name Out of My Mind, to my friends and family, especially my husband, Jason, uh, who are there with me even when I overpromise and underperform, to those who are watching and listening and reading and interacting with my work. Thank you to my Patreon sponsors and those who drop a dime in my PayPal account and to those who are out there just using this in their lives, their jobs and spare time to make the lives of people with mental health issues and other marginalized people better. The people who are striving and surviving every day when things get hard, thank you as well. Now today is the first of four uh, videos on executive function, which is an interesting concept. We don't often know what it is. I'm going to pull my handy dandy little thing here and try to center it on the video so you can see what it says. Uh, the definition of executive function according to Adele Diamond in the Executive Functions Annual Review of Psychology 64 pages 135 to 68. The definition is, it is a family of top-down mental processes needed when you have to concentrate and pay attention, when going on automatic or relying on instinct or intuition would be ill-advised, insufficient, or impossible. Now, executive function disorder is a symptom, not a disease. It can be found in a variety of things and can manifest in a variety of ways, which is why we don't use it a lot in the DSM-5, um, because it has a tendency to pop up pretty much anywhere where you're going to have some impairment in your life. This can include ADHD, uh, in addiction, autism spectrum disorder, other learning disorders, including auditory processing disorder and dyslexia, injury to the prefrontal cortex, hi to the horse who kicked me in the head when I was 20, some cancer treatments, uh, mood disorders, especially bipolar, post-traumatic stress disorder and other anxiety disorders, chronic pain, normal aging, dementia, and overall stress in your life. All of these things can affect your ability to uh, have your effect, executive functioning work the way it should. Now, in my research for this video, I went to look up what is executive function in, in terms of the things that it does. And I saw uh, various listings going from seven different executive functions all the way up to 12. I found that eight works best for me, which is why I divided it by these eight. So there's other people out there who are going to divide it somewhat differently, but this gets to some broad categories of parts of your life that are going to be affected. And what I'm going to do today, while I set up my journal for April, and this is my bullet journal that I use to keep organized. It is not perfect, but it is mine is I am going to talk a little bit about how executive function can affect your life. Now, as you can see, I'm going back and cheating, looking at my March 2019 page to do my April 2019 page because that helps me with number one, working memory. I know that if I do this approximately the same way that I set it up in March, I will be able to fit everything I need on this page. So working memory is the first of the eight categories of behavior that is affected by executive function. Working memory is when you have a list for the grocery stores, probably the most common use of this. Let's see, do I want to go? I want to put here, I think, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm also going to be demonstrating some working memory as I do this. Now, 
I'm going to go back one more page. April starts on a Monday. So I will start, oops, I will start my month. The first goes there. The second goes there. The third goes there. The fourth goes there. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, go back over to here. Eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. So I'm going to go to the grocery store. Now I have a pretty decent working memory built up because I've been the one doing the grocery shopping for my family for a very long time. So when I go to the grocery store, part of my working memory is actually not, is more long-term memory. I know I'm always going to need milk. I know I'm always going to need coffee creamer. I know I'm always going to need uh, some sort of meat for dinner. I know I'm always going to need some sort of um, sandwich meats, things like that, various vegetables. And I know, because I've done this for a long time, a lot of this has moved from my working memory into my long-term memory. Now, my husband, who didn't do the, the most of the grocery shopping for years, um, he has it all still stored in his working memory. I mean, he knows what to do for dinner. He's the one who cooks most of them. Wow, did you just see that? Look what happened when I got doing two things at once. That's why we have correction tape. Is that I managed to completely lose my working memory of how a month goes because I was talking about two things at once. Like I said, executive function relies on you being able to cope with several different things at a time, which is one of the reasons why when I do coping skills, uh, you can see that sometimes I can't quite do what I wanted to do. Now I have to wait for that to dry for a second. So working memory, I'm going to be worried about, I'm going to be worried about my grocery list. So I tell my husband, I need you to go to the grocery store because I'm busy today. I need you to pick up milk, eggs, honey, because I've got lots and lots of chai in order to have, or chai, chai in order to make real chai tea and not that chai tea latte, latte stuff. And that should be dry enough. And oh, by the way, I really need some asparagus because it's that time of the year and it's probably pretty close to perfect right now. And we get to the last part of the month and because it's in my long-term memory, I know I only need two more, 29 and 30, because 30 days has April. Okay, that's my very first page. On the back part of that is going to be my half week page. Now you notice that I was really careful when I set up my bullet journal, and I'll show you this for a second. I've got it set up with some free space here for me to play with. I've got appointment times and things, and I wasn't able to go to that yesterday. That was an FST for one of my clients. Um, my work to do and home to do are split out. This is what works for me. Um, I often will put little sayings over here, do the impossible task, intent is not magic, that sort of thing. And you notice that I didn't have a full month last month because I just restarted my bullet journal. And then I have a future log on the last page that tells me some things that I'm going to need to add to my April log. So. I tell my husband to pick up those things from the grocery store, and what do you think happens? I can tell you what happens. He uh, forgets half of them because he didn't write a list, because his working memory is very poor right now because my husband has severe chronic pain. And I have managed to lose my April page here. Does anybody know what I did with it? You're probably laughing at me, telling me, Jenny, what's this executive functioning thing you're training me on? You can't seem to find anything today. Anyhow, so working memory is holding things in your memory long enough to get them done. For instance, the page of your journal. Here you are. Okay. 
So I'm going to go on the 17th uh, at 8.40. My husband has a doctor appointment at Swope in Independence with Dr. Jamal. We know nothing about Dr. Jamal. We have never met this person before. I don't even know for sure whether Dr. Jamal is male or female because my husband made the appointment. I didn't. So on the 18th, I have an appointment. And my husband, when he did this, he gave me both days. I'm going to actually have to clarify that because, again, his executive function was such that he sent the text to me immediately as he made the phone call and put both. But I think he made his appointment first. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, flexible thinking. It's number two. Working memory, as you can see, can be disrupted as simply as, oops, sorry, as simply as trying to talk about two things at once. Now, I'm going to flip this over, and now I'm going to cheat. How are you going to cheat, Jenny? You're going to trace it. That is correct. I'm going to move this out of the way, because I don't need it anymore. And I am going to take this and put it over this, and I'm going to trace while I talk about flexible thinking. Now, bullet journaling is actually a really good example of having to deal with flexible thinking because different people will do very different things according to their needs with a bullet journal. I like to have my week all on one page I like this particular setup best of all the different things I've tried. Over the years that I've worked on bullet journals, I've done everything from a very simple task list to very complicated monthly setups with dozens of things going on. And I've found that setting it up like this allows me to do what I need most and gives me that little bit of creative satisfaction. Now I could use a ruler but I'd have to get up, and frankly, I don't care if it's a little bit uneven, so I'm not going to. And let's get the second one here. Whoa, as you can see, I got off the lines just a little bit. Let's get that evened out. Flexible thinking is that second piece where what you're trying to do is not coming out the way you'd want, so you have to bend to it. I've demonstrated that a couple times, not perfectly, of course, because that's the whole point of flexible thinking, in that while I've been doing this, I've made mistakes and gotten out my handy dandy correction tape and just covered it and not cared that my paper is off white and my correction is white and that it doesn't quite show the ink as prettily, which is fine. The third one is impulse control. This is, I just got paid. I have three bills due this weekend, but over the weekend, my favorite video game came out and I can't wait. And I wouldn't know anybody who'd ever do anything like that, would I, Jenny? And that's a lie because I absolutely would do that. For the starters, I'm just tracing the pages. And uh, so... Impulse control is when you know you have a long-term goal of some variety and you give in to an immediate want. Sometimes an immediate need, but usually it's an immediate want. Impulse control can be made more difficult by lots of things and it is one of the executive functions. The next one is self-monitoring. This is being able to identify when you are doing things you shouldn't be doing. This is a, a subcategory of this is not being able to handle social cues. Uh, let's say that you're in a work situation and you just keep talking about this really cool, very violent, very sexually graphic movie that you've been seeing all weekend long. 
and people are shuffling their papers and they're finding things to be busy about and they're moving away from you and you aren't picking up on any of that. You aren't recognizing that you're not seeing their social cues. Another manifestation of self-monitoring is not noticing when you're under significant stress. And that can be absolutely brutal. I uh, experienced this quite a bit. Over the last year, I've had enough stress that on um, the inventory that I use for my clients, whose name I've forgotten at the moment, um, but isn't necessarily to my da daily work, uh, I score in the highest category of most likely to become seriously ill. So my executive function is much lower than usual, and it was low to begin with thanks to a horse that kicked me in my head just before my 21st birthday. To move on, we've got self-monitoring. Let's go back one. We had impulse control. Before that, we had flexible thinking. And number one was working memory. I'm going to bring this back down. Working memory, flexible thinking, impulse control, self-monitoring. Let's go back again to the next one, which is emotional control. And this is just that stereotypical bursting into tears, quote, for no reason, unquote, or bursting into a rage, or laughing uncontrollably, which is less common, but it does happen. Not being able to manage your emotions. I don't actually like the word control, because we all have emotions and we don't want to control them. Control leads to problems. What we want to do is manage them, which leads to healthy expression of those problems. We'll get to that when I start talking about what to do with executive function problems. Okay, here's a big one for me that when my executive function is not going well, this is one of my biggest cues. That is task initiation, also called self-motivation in some of the literature. Oh, let's see. Did I just do what I did? Look at that, I did. Do I want to do a day backwards? No. What I want to do is because I did this. So I've got this and this are correct. This and this are not. Okay. Anyway, task initiation is where you're struggling to even start something because, because the task, for whatever feeling, feels like the impossible task. We will talk about the impossible task a lot. It is a thing associated with anxiety disorders, with... Uh, stress with lots of different things where a task that normally wouldn't be that difficult feels insurmountable. It's a large part of the reason why people think that people with executive function disorder uh, illnesses are, quote, lazy, unquote. It's because they don't understand the nature of the impossible task. I'm going to go ahead and rather than get rid of all of it, I just realized I only have to do this for about half of it. Okay. So the impossible task in self-motivation is number six. Number seven is organization. And this we're talking about organization of physical space. Where is the thing I need when I need it? Is it accessible? Do I know what it is? Is it maintained in proper order? Um, do I organize my files on my computer in such a way that I can do it? Um, when I go looking in my hand, in my uh, handbag, purse, or uh, messenger bag, this is not gender specific, folks. Uh, can I find the things that I brought to work with me? Um, that sort of thing and developing an organizational system that works for you. Now, this is my time organizational system, but this is actually more along the lines of number eight, the final one, which is planning, 
prioritization and time management. I have significant issues in this, which is why I keep a journal. Also, I am cheating by using these videos to help myself become more organized. So let's review. Executive function is those higher order thoughts that allow a person to be able to make the major decisions that make their life easier. It's not a symptom. Ah, let's reverse that. It is a symptom, not a disease. And let's go back just a little more. And there are eight categories of executive function that need to be reviewed when we talk about how to deal with them. The first is working memory. The second is flexible thinking. The third is impulse control. The fourth is self-monitoring. The fifth is emotional control. The sixth is task initiation or self-motivation. The seventh is organization. And the eighth is planning and prioritization. Thank you for staying here with me while I do this. I'm going to take a break right now and remind you that this will be up later today on my Patreon. If you want first day access, you go to www.patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S and sign up to be a patron at any level and you will be able to see this on the first day instead of three days later. The second thing I want to remind you is for right now, half of everything I make on Patreon or PayPal because of my writing, my videos, or my audio casts that are cut from this is going to my best friend, Catherine Malone, LCSW, who has the office across the hall from me. Kathy has a heart condition that requires a heart transplant. Um, because uh, the American healthcare system is a bit of a mess, Kathy has to raise $20,000 before she can even be approved to be put on the heart transplant list so that she can prove that she can pay for the anti-rejection meds. I find that appalling, and I fully intend to storm the world and make that a better place because of that at some point. But in the meantime, I'm doing what I can, and that is all this money that I'm making, which isn't a lot right now, I want half of it to go to Kathy every month. Again, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in a little bit.